impressed when we tested the Mazda 3 back in 2020. Stunning looks, great drive, extremely high levels of refinement. But see, the world is changing, and it did so ever so dramatically in the same year. COVID-19. Kapasok na sa Pilipinas ang coronavirus. I am placing Luzon under quarantine. Yeah, there's no way I can do it as good as The Rock. Crossovers are slowly becoming the choice of many, overshadowing sedans and hatchbacks alike. And this is Mazda's answer. The CX-30 all-wheel drive sport. Maybe I need a bottle of tequila or something. Unlike its much larger siblings, you definitely won't confuse this with the rest of Mazda's crossover lineup. It ditches the larger, taller look of the CX-5, and it really retains more of a car-like silhouette. It's essentially a Mazda 3 on stilts. It's got very familiar lines down the side, and its profile is like, well, more reminiscent of a sportback. Now back to the CX-30, the front clip features LED headlamps in a very striking shape. And you can see it's very recessed in here, adding a layer of depth and paired with its huge grille, it makes for a pretty darn good looking front end. And it achieves this through minimalism by not adding too much angles and unnecessary thingamabobs common on modern crossovers. What's not so minimal is the plastic cladding on the side. There is just a bit too much here. Maybe a darker color can help quote unquote hide it somehow because on this soul crystal red, which is a choice color, it really does stand out for better or for worse. I guess the whole point of that is to make it look a little bit more rugged, a little bit more capable, which I do understand. But to me, Mazdas are a bit more of an elegant car, and this really doesn't look all that elegant. It doesn't look like a roughneck, no, let's not go that far. But it does sit on 40 millimeters more of ground clearance than the Mazda 3, which is ever so apparent if you look at the wheel wells. Look at this, whoa! It also sits on 18s with 55 series tires. Now Mazda never really gives its cars radically designed wheels, but really doesn't have to. I think the finish and look of it really complements the overall design perfectly. And however hidden, they're stopped by disc brakes all around, which look great. The back is as handsome as the front, and the shape is very unique with the hatch pointing outward, and also has a little more curve than the Mazda 3. There are more LEDs found here, and much like the front, the shape of the tail lamps are very aggressive. Also, just for an extra touch of premium, the turn signals all around don't just blink here, but they gracefully fade out, you know, like Donald Trump. Now, no bias here, just truth, but this has got to be my favorite in terms of look in this particular segment. What I would love to know is, what do you think? What's your favorite? Could it be the Celtos, maybe the Kona, or perhaps something else? Do let us know in the comments below, because this should be interesting. The CX-30 shares the same platform as the Mazda 3, so it would go without saying that it shares the exact same engine, which is a 2-liter Skyactiv G made it to a 6-speed automatic transmission that produces 153 horses and 200 newton meters of torque. Now, in the city, you're doing about 9 kilometers per liter. Light traffic, you're doing about 11, not bad. When that clears up, you can actually push to 14. Now, on the highway, you can do up to 17 kilometers per liter. Now, with all those figures combined, you're probably thinking, yeah, great, nothing spectacular, but hang on. This this is an all-wheel drive system, and that is a gasoline engine. So 11 kilometers per liter in the city is not bad at all. The plushness and quality many are accustomed to in a Mazda is found in the CX-30. The cabin is almost a carbon copy of the Mazda 3. Soft plush leather is found in every seat, front to back. The armrests are also very comfortable. I wouldn't expect any kind of soreness from leaning on these for a long drive, especially the center console. Man, this thing's like a pillow! Up in front is a real treat to the eyes and hands as the dash just seamlessly contours around the cabin, only broken by the screen that pops up in the middle. It's huge! And although no one really pokes on the dashboards, Mazda did an impressive job to cover it with the soft touch material. And to be honest with you, this interior is so good, it can even rival those of, dare I say, German cars. The steering wheel is very nice to the touch as well, and the buttons all have a great feel to them. The same story goes for the rest of the switches and dials found here. Everything here has good weight and tactility. It's evident that Mazda really put time and effort to make this cabin feel special. Speaking of dials, the 8.8-inch widescreen infotainment found here is operated by this huge one found in the center. 
So the operations of the system is all done through here. This knob controls almost everything, which is actually a good thing, so Mazda says. See, by doing so, without use the use of a touchscreen and you leaning forward, you have your concentration more on the road. It does, it does take some time to get used to because you're used to fiddling it with it like this, but it's actually better for you. After a day or two, it's really not a problem at all. The infotainment in the CX-30 has both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now both work with almost no fault. The screen is very sharp and has good contrast. And the response from the system is almost instantaneous. We experience close to no delays in input. You can also access various settings for the safety systems and features of the CX-30. And trust me, there are a lot. You can adjust the collision avoidance alert, turn on and off the lane keep assist, radar cruise, cross traffic alerts, and more. And trust me, I do mean more. And to top it all off, it has the same bow system we fell in love with when in the Mazda 3. Now with all of that, you're probably thinking, it's so darn good, there's got to be something wrong, right? There's just gotta be. Well, there is one thing. And that is the space back here is really not stellar. Nope, not at all. Sure, the seats are actually very comfortable. You get a center armrest with two cup holders. You got vents up front. But really, the space is nothing spectacular. Leg room, nothing great. Headroom, also nothing great. Don't even think about putting three adults back here because the center tunnel, man, that's pretty high. So really, it does have one fault. This, this has got to be its biggest problem. Or is it its smallest problem? I don't know, I'm confused. The CX-30 has a whole host of features that come in handy for long trips down expressways. You have radar cruise, which keeps you at a safe distance from the car in front of you, lane departure warning, which alerts you when there is a vehicle in your blind spots and when changing lanes, and there is even a driver monitoring, which alerts you when the cameras down here on the instrument cluster notice fatigue or sleepiness. Now I could go out and test it, yes, that's true, but I'm just gonna trust Mazda's word on this one. There is also another cool piece of tech, which is the heads-up display, which keeps you in check when you are driving on the highway if cruise control is not your thing. And trust me, if cruise control is not your thing, these paddles certainly are. Oh. <laughs> Now, as for comfort in the cabin, it is thoroughly impressive about how comfortable it is in here. There's barely any wind noise or tire noise that creeps in, and the ride, it's, it's just so smooth. Coupled with very comfortable seats, going on a long road trip in the CX-30, no problems whatsoever. And there is also over 500 liters of cargo space in the back, which is actually more than the Mazda 3. And that obviously more than doubles when you fold the seats down. So you can pack more than enough luggage and gear for two if, say, you'll go camping, as you would since Mazda markets this car to be perfect for individuals with active lifestyles. Now, once you're out of the city and find yourself on provincial roads, the CX-30 is more than capable of having a little bit of fun in the twisties. The steering feel is a perfect balance of being light, but not to the point where it feels completely numb. You still get a decent amount of feedback. This is obviously not a hot hatch, but considering what it is, there's still a lot of fun to be had in here, man. The transmission in here is actually pretty responsive, as are the paddles, as I previously mentioned. And when you're on the twisties outside of the metro, when you're pushing it, you're still able to do nine and a half kilometers per liter. How it does that? I have no idea. The CX-30 achieves this with what Mazda calls G-vectoring control. Now, this system out of Mazda's philosophy of Jin Bai Tai, which roughly translates to horse and rider as one. So what happens is when the car makes small adjustments to the engine's power delivery based on the driver's steering input. Now, I won't go into full details of what the system does. I mean, we did so in a previous review of the Mazda, but the results make for a very connected experience. And if you don't drive it like a bat out of hell in the middle of a rally, then most times the car will do what you expect it to. 
Now in the city is where the CX-30 does exceptionally well. As mentioned, it is quiet, but even more so, you don't have any problems when you're going over bad roads inside the metro. And in Metro Manila, bad roads are like almost everywhere. So really, it does excel and it just feels so good whether you're driving it on tight streets or on the slow paced road of EDSA or the tight turns inside Cebu or God knows whatever else traffic can throw at you. It just feels absolutely premium to be in this car. You're comfortable and you're not taxed at all. It's a great drive whether you're going fast or like I said, in the city. As mentioned earlier, it really is a nice car to be in. And that doesn't change being in traffic for hours. Everything is nice and plush and the seats are very comfortable and supportive. The tech included with the CX-30 is a welcome addition to the city driving experience. The sight lines in here are a little less than your typical crossover, but since you are sitting up, getting used to it is not really a bother at all. And if you need just a little bit more light to come into the car, well, this is the top of the line, so... Yeah, baby. The compact proportions of the CX-30, I think, is one of its main selling points. Although it isn't a full-on SUV, the CX-5 might still be too big for some, and that's where this thing comes in. It really is just like a car in here, the size, its ride, and the way it drives is not far from the car it's based on, the biggest difference being its ride height. This is Mazda's answer to the ever-growing demand of crossovers. People want to sit in that elevated position, and they also want the ground clearance to give them the confidence to take it off the beaten path. In the case of the CX-30, Mazda took everything that was great with the Mazda 3 and then married it with what people are looking for from a crossover. Bada bim, bada boom, ya get this, this beauty. Now you'd think that somewhere down the line, somebody would have to compromise, but no, not really. Mazda seems to have pulled it off seamlessly. Almost really. There is just one problem. It's price. This all-wheel drive sport comes in at 1,990,000 Philippine pesos, which is a whopper of a price. I definitely agree with you. But you have to admit, as do I, that this car definitely leads the class when it comes to refinement, performance, and quality. Oh, and one more thing. There is also the pro version, which comes in at half a million Philippine pesos cheaper. So there's that.